He was raised at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. At the end of the Clone Wars, when the Empire rose to power, he was hidden. Someone took him from the temple. Then his memory becomes dark. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Mandalorian season two video for the full history of the child. They gave him a name and explained where he came from, what his history was, how he fits into the canon of the prequel movies, the Clone Wars, the original trilogy. So we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and a really strong connection to the prophecy of the chosen one. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know on the video. Who do you think is the Jedi that rescued him during Order 66? Careful for spoilers if you have not seen The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 5 yet because we'll be talking about everything that they discussed during that. Starting with the big stuff first. So recently during Season 2 Episode 5, they revealed that the child, Baby Yoda's real name, was Grogu and answered almost every single question you've ever had about him. I was kind of surprised and not surprised that they went with a non-Y name because the only other member of Yoda's species that we've ever met was Yaddle and she had a name that sounded very similar to Yoda's so you kind of wonder if all members of their race have similar sounding names. Obviously this also confirms a little bit about exactly who he is and how he's related to Yoda and potentially Yaddle. Even after season 2 episode 4 because it seems like Moff Gideon has this big cloning plot involving the Kamino facility from Attack of the Clones and all the stuff with Palpatine's clones during the movies. The clever way that they reveal his true name was that he told Ahsoka telepathically through the force. On the show they've kind of made it seem like he can't speak verbally, he just makes baby noises, cooing or burbling sounds all the time depending on his moods. There had been a lot of questions during season 1 about what his speech might sound like if he actually ever did speak out loud. Would he have the same backwards speech that Yoda did or would he speak with regular syntax like everyone else? I like that they didn't answer that question in the Ahsoka episode. And because he ages so slowly, no matter how many seasons The Mandalorian goes for, unless they do some giant flash forward in the series finale, he's always going to be this tiny little kid. I think they're implying that he's always going to communicate the way that he does now, just using his body language and tiny noises, and he and Mando will just be a lot like Han Solo and Chewbacca from the original trilogy. Even though Chewbacca is always speaking normally in his own language, it just sounds like gibberish to everyone else, and Han Solo just kind of understands it. Right now Mando has kind of learned to do the same thing, just understanding Grogu's patterns of communication through his body language. It also kind of helps that most of the time all he's communicating is that he's hungry or he wants stuff. Like that's his default state, I'm hungry, if you don't get me some food I'll snatch it for myself. But early prediction, I think by the time we get to the later seasons, when his abilities in the Force develop a little more, he'll be able to actually push his thoughts into Mando's mind directly and communicate really, really important things that way. The really cool thing that Ahsoka told us though is that Grogu's early history goes back many decades to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. He was there for a long time. Canonically, he was also born the same year as Anakin Skywalker. Let that sit for a minute and think about the implications. That's some straight up Harry Potter, Neville Longbottom stuff right there. Because they have a chosen one character in both Harry Potter and Star Wars, Anakin Skywalker is the chosen one of the Star Wars universe, but in the Harry Potter canon, Neville Longbottom was born on the same day as Harry Potter and Voldemort learns of a prophecy foretelling his death at the hands of a chosen one who's supposed to be born on the day that both Harry Potter and Neville Longbottom were born. So he had to choose which child to go after and kill and he just chose Harry Potter arbitrarily. So it was a self-fulfilling prophecy, he created the chosen one, but it was an arbitrary choice, so Neville Longbottom could have just as easily been the chosen one. So now we have a similar situation in the Star Wars universe as they're implying, where you have two incredibly powerful children born around the same time, so it'll be interesting to see how they try to weave Grogu into the idea of the prophecy of the chosen one of the Force, bringing balance to the Force. But speaking of which, Ahsoka does clarify some of the details about where Grogu actually came from originally before he arrived at the Jedi Temple. He did spend the majority of his life at the Temple before Order 66. But he's not a clone of Yoda, he's just another member of Yoda and Yaddle's species. Ahsoka kind of omits any mention of Yaddle in the episode. Fans were kind of wondering about that, so press F in the chat to pay respects to Yaddle. 
Yaddle disappeared after Phantom Menace, mostly behind the scenes because George Lucas wanted to focus more on Yoda in the story, and they didn't want to have to deal with her, and they were kind of unhappy with how the physical puppet models turned out for both Yoda and Yaddle. So when they got to Attack of the Clones, George Lucas just did Yoda as a CG model, then eventually wound up going back and full-blown retconning Phantom Menace with CG Yoda. So the main reason why you didn't see Yaddle in Attack of the Clones is mostly just because they wanted to save money because it was way more expensive to do the CG Yoda. She wound up stepping down from the Jedi Council, survived Order 66, and then she just got mentioned again during the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game sort of laying the track work to explain how she could have possibly survived and is still alive out somewhere in the galaxy hiding. It's sort of a Mace Windu kind of situation, like if you don't see the body, technically they're still alive. Some people thought that Yoda's race were originally supposed to be the Wills because the original Star Wars script read from the Journal of the Wills, they were sort of meant to be the canonical guardians of the Force and keepers of all knowledge. They're the ones who taught Qui-Gon Jinn how to become a Force ghost. But here's the thing, and this is actually kind of relevant to recent Easter eggs on The Mandalorian with midichlorians. Originally, George Lucas said that he actually intended for the Wills to be the midichlorians, microscopic organisms. And had he made the sequel trilogy movies himself, instead of selling Star Wars to Disney, he had intended on getting more into that concept during the sequel movies. Whether you like that idea or not, he was essentially going to double down on midichlorians. But in that way, Anakin Skywalker, child of the midichlorians the Force, the will of the Force, would have been a child born of the wills, and just brought the term in Shmi Skywalker as a surrogate. Now the way that Grogu explains his history during the episode through Ahsoka kind of translating for him, he was a very, very young child when he arrived at the temple. He doesn't have memories of his time before the temple, so we don't know if he was also a child of the wills, conceived the same way that Anakin was. Typically, the Jedi would bring Force-sensitive children to the temple to be trained when they were between the ages of like two and four. Older than that, they would always say would be too old. That's why Anakin Skywalker was, quote-unquote, too old to be trained. That also gets into the idea that Ahsoka talks about during the episode, forming attachments and what that can do to fully trained Jedi, talking about Anakin Skywalker's turn to Darth Vader. So regardless of who Grogu was born of, which other members of Yoda's species, he was too young to have formed an attachment to them before he was brought to the temple. But it doesn't really matter because now he's already formed that father-son attachment to Mando. So Grogu was actually at the Jedi Temple before Anakin Skywalker arrived in Phantom Menace. So you have to picture an even smaller version of Grogu in the background inside of these other rooms in the temple, snatching cookies with the Force while this is all going on during Attack of the Clones. Ahsoka said that he was trained by many Jedi Masters at the Temple. That's because he was at the Temple for so long before Order 66 and the Purge. It also confirms he's much more intelligent than he lets on. I think we'd suspected this after Season 1. Like, he was just pretending to be a little child, but he's 50 years old. So even if physically he seems like a child, mentally he's had all that time to learn all those things. But this also does confirm that he trained under Master Yoda and probably trained under Yaddle at some point too, or at least knew them. You have to imagine that members of Yoda's species are so rare around the galaxy that Yoda himself probably had a vested interest in helping his race survive, so he would probably go crazy anytime a new member of his species was found. But as Ahsoka goes on to say, Grogu's memories are somewhat incomplete because of the trauma of Order 66 and the time he spent hiding during the events of the original trilogy. So he only remembers that when the Emperor activated Order 66 and sent Anakin Skywalker, who had newly been minted as Darth Vader, to kill all the Jedi at the temple, including the younglings, everyone press F in the chat for them, someone grabbed Groku, rescuing him, taking him into hiding. He doesn't say who, or he doesn't remember, I think mostly because they'll reveal who that is later on the series, maybe with a flashback, or they'll just have him tell someone as he remembers more things about his history. It could have only been one of a number of few characters, I'll explain in a second, because it would have had to have been a Jedi or a Jedi Master who was at the temple during Order 66 when Anakin was attacking. In most of the Jedi Order, like 90% of them were either off-planet or in other places on Coruscant, in the case of Mace Windu and the Jedi Masters that went for Emperor Palpatine. And unless Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau want to take another character from Legends and bring them back into canon and say that they were at the temple and rescued him, the biggest character right now, canonically, who was there and who survived Order 66 was actually Jocasta Nu, the Jedi Librarian. 
Canonically, after the Purge, she went into hiding and started hoarding Jedi holocrons in an attempt to create a new Jedi school for anyone who survived the Purge or other new Force-sensitive children that would pop up around the galaxy. She also possessed a long list of Force-sensitive children that the Jedi Order were getting ready to go bring in before Order 66 went down. But just given all the details that we know right now, unless Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau want to throw us a curveball, it's possible that Joe Costa grabbed Grogu in the chaos of Anakin's attack and was able to take him into hiding with her and just keep him safe when she eventually went on the run from Darth Vader and the Inquisitors. And these people who Mando was hired to take him from, who he kills during the pilot episode, were just hired guns that were loyal to the Jedi Order. Not Jedi themselves, just people that she had arranged to help protect him after her death. But because there's so many people asking about Mace Windu and Yaddle right now, yes, it's totally possible that Yaddle helped protect him and just came back and they'll work her back into the canon somehow. Or Mace Windu, who possibly survived, could have somehow rescued him between the time he fell out of Palpatine's office and Anakin made it to the Jedi Temple to attack all the Jedi. Samuel L. Jackson was even pitching himself for how Mace Windu could come back during Celebration 2017 a couple of years ago. While you're all sitting there, I know you're all in my corner on this, we know Jedi's can fall from incredible heights and survive. So apparently, I am not dead. Mace Windu is awaiting his return. Let's make it happen. There's so many theories about what happened to his character. You just have to remember that unless you see a body, no one is ever perma-dead. That's not just Star Wars rules or science fiction rules, that's movie rules in general. I will do a new video about the Jedi Temple on Tython that they're going to in which Jedi Ahsoka was referring to that would answer the beacon, Jedi or potential Sith, that should post in the next couple of days. I'll also be doing a video for the Ahsoka vs. Grand Admiral Thrawn spin-off series probably tomorrow, and I'll explain how that plot crosses over with the Mandalorian series and when they'll get into more of that Thrawn story and the Bo-Katan vs. Moff Gideon stuff. Everything is connected, but post all your theories in the comments. Who was that Jedi who rescued Grogu from the temple during Order 66? Everyone click here for my full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 5 Ahsoka Tano video and click here for my new Grand Admiral Thrawn Mandalorian video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is the way.